Beer in Mexico, Wikipedia article audio Beer in Mexico has a long history. While Mesoamerican cultures knew of fermented alcoholic beverages, including a corn beer, long before the Spanish conquest, European-style beer brewed with barley was introduced with the Spanish soon after Hernán Cortés's arrival. Production of this beer here was limited during the colonial period due to the lack of materials and severe restrictions and taxes placed on the product by Spanish authorities. After the Mexican War of Independence, these restrictions disappeared, and the industry was permitted to develop. Furthermore, the arrival of German immigrants and the short-lived empire of Austrian Maximilian I in the 19th century provided the impetus for the opening of many breweries in various parts of the country. By 1918, there were 36 brewing companies, but over the 20th century, the industry consolidated until today, only two corporations, Grupo Modelo and FEMSA control 90% of the Mexican beer market. This industry is one of the most prevalent in the country, with over 63% of the population buying one brand or another. Beer is also a major export for the country, with most going to the United States, but is available in over 150 countries in the world. Prior to the Spanish conquest, there had been fermented alcoholic beverages in Mexico. The best known of these is pulque, which is the fermented sap of the maguey or agave plant. More similar to beer is a lesser known beverage, called tesquino or isquiate, brewed by various cultures. This is made from fermented corn, and creates light amber-colored liquid which is whisked before drinking. Tesquino can still be found in Mexico today, mostly homemade, in the north and west of Mexico in states such as Chihuahua, Sonora, and Colima. Among the Tarahumaras, the drink is used for rituals. A similar beverage, called pasal, is made in Oaxaca, Chiapas, and Tabasco with corn and cocoa beans. History 16th century to 19th century Beer brewed with grain such as barley was produced in small quantities by Hernán Cortés soldiers, but it was limited due to the lack of supplies. The first official concession to brew European-style beer was granted to Alfonso de Herrero in 1543 or 1544. Its exact location is unknown, but it is thought to have been located in the south of Mexico City or in a Mecamica, Mexico State. Herrera's brewery struggled during its first years, as alcohol consumption was highly regulated by authorities, and the new brew had to compete with native beverages. It was also more expensive due to the lack of ingredients. However, the beverage caught on, as it was drunk by colonial authorities, leading others to want it as well. Herrera worked to expand his brewery and the land on which wheat and barley were raised. In the long run, Herrero's brewery did not survive, and the production of European-style beverages such as beer and wine were heavily taxed and heavily regulated by Spain to protect home markets. The purpose of this was to make colonials import these products from Europe. While the policy mostly worked, beer brewing never entirely ceased. In the years just before independence, beer consumption was becoming established in Mexico, leading to disputes over the rights to produce it. Englishman Gillens and Merritt Miguel Ramos Arispe and Justino Tullian all claimed exclusive rights to produce beer in Mexico. After the end of the war, the beer produced by the Tullian brewery was the most popular. After the war, colonial restrictions were gone and the industry was allowed to develop, starting in the 1820s. In 1845, 
a barley beer flavored with pilancillo was introduced with the names of Pila Sica and La Candelaria by Swiss Bernhard Boldgard and Bavarian Federico Herzog. The industry truly began to develop in the latter half of the 19th century, due to an influx of German immigrants to Mexico and the short-lived Second Mexican Empire headed by Emperor Maximilian I of Mexico of the House of Habsburg, an Austro-Germanic ruling family. The emperor had his own brewer, who produced Vienna-style dark beers. This influence can be seen in two popular brands of Negra Modelo and Dos Equus Amber. From the mid-19th to the early 20th century, a large number of breweries were opened in various regions of the country. Some of these include the Cerveceria Toluca y Mexico by Swiss Augustin Marandes in 1865, Cerveceria Cruz Blanca in Mexico City by Emil Dercher in 1869, the San Diego Brewery by Carlos Fredenben in 1860, the Cerveceria Yucateca by José Ponce Solis in Merida in 1869, the Fabrica de Cerveza y Hielo in Monterrey in 1886, the Severceria Piazzini in Monterey in 1889, the Cerveceria Estrella by Juan E. Ojerner in 1890, the Cerveceria Guillermo Has y Compania in Orizaba by Henry Manthe, William Haas, Kuno van Alten and Adolf Berhard, the Cerveceria Chihuahua by Juan Terrazas in Chihuahua in 1896, the Cerveceria Sonora by George Gruning, Dr. Albert Heffer, and Jacob Schul in 1896, the Cerveceria del Pacifico by Jorge Clausen, German Evers, and Emilio Felipe in 1900. The establishment of a railroad system in Mexico at the end of the 19th century allowed the import of machinery and malt from the United States, but it also forced Mexican breweries to compete against U.S. beer, which began to be distributed in the country. By 1890, the first substantial, industrial brewing facility in the country was built in Monterey by Severceria Cuauhtémoc. Four years later, another large brewery, Cerveceria Moctezuma, began in Orizaba. By 1918, there were 36 beer producers in Mexico. Prohibition in the United States during the 1920s helped the Mexican beer industry, with Americans crossing the border to drink. This spurred breweries along the border, such as Mexicala Brewery and the Aztec Brewing Company, both in Baja California. Beer became big business by the early 20th century. By 1925, despite the strong preference still for pulque in the center of the country, Mexico was producing 50,000 liters of beer per year. To promote their product further, European immigrant beer brewers in the first part of the 20th century campaigned against native drinks such as pulque. They claimed such drinks were produced by unsanitary methods and promoted beer as rigorously hygienic and modern. The strategy proved successful, with pulque now generally looked down upon and imbibed by relatively few people, with Mexican brewed beer ubiquitous and extremely popular. 20th Century However, competition soon forced the consolidation of the industry. Cerveceria Cuauhtémoc in Monterey first went national when it bought the Tecati Brewery. Cerveceria Toluca became Cerveceria Modelo in 1925, and soon began buying smaller competitors. During the rest of the 20th century, larger companies bought out smaller companies, assuming their brands, until only two major producers were left. Cerveceria Modelo and Cerveceria Cuauhtémoc Moctezuma owned by FEMSA. Many smaller breweries, 
such as Cerveceria Mexicali opened in 1920, which were not bought by these giants were forced to close. Most of the brands known today were creations made by the smaller breweries of the past that were absorbed into the stock of these two giants, who distribute these products in both Mexico and abroad. These producers have 17 plants located in 11 states with a capacity of 46 million hectoliters annually and support 92 centers of barley production in Mexico. The industry employs 90,000 people and 800,000 jobs are related to it indirectly. The Mexican beer industry is one of the economy's most prolific with 63% of the domestic population consuming one or more of the brands, and Mexico ranks third in global exports of beer. In 2004, exports of beer were valued at 1.2 billion US dollars. Domestic sales were $6 billion. Mexico displaced Holland in 2003 as the worldwide exporter in beer sales, selling 1.39 million tons, with sales, primarily to the U.S., continuing to increase. Grupo Modelo and FEMSA send more than 80% of their exports to the United States. Mexico's growth is coming largely at the expense of U.S. brands. The two main Mexican producers reported increases in export volume of 42% and 20.5% in 2006, compared to less than 5% for Anheuser-Busch and Malson Coors in the same year. Mexican beer has done so well in the United States that Miller SAB tried selling citrus and salt-flavored Miller Chill and Anheuser-Busch attempted Bud Light Lime. The best-known and best-selling Mexican beer in the United States by far is Corona, produced by Grupo Modelo and distributed by Anheuser-Busch. FEMSA entered the U.S. market later but has paired with Dutch enterprise Heineken USA to promote and distribute its brands, especially Dos Equus and Tecati. Some Mexican beers, such as Modelo Especial and Negra Modelo, are available in limited quantities on tap in cities such as New York, Houston, and Phoenix. 21st Century In Mexico Beer is primarily produced by two large conglomerates, Cerveceria Modelo slash Grupo Modelo and Cerveceria Cua Udamoc Moctezuma slash FEMSA. Cerveceria Modelo was founded in 1925 in Mexico City, with its first two brands, Modelo and Corona, exporting 8 million bottles a year to various countries. First exports to the United States were realized as early as 1933. The first of the company's many acquisitions was the Cerveceria Toluca y Mexico, absorbing its Victoria and Pilsner brands in 1935. Modelo continued buying smaller local breweries in various parts of the country, absorbing most of the brands produced and making many of them available nationwide. Starting in the 1980s, the enterprise began new businesses, such as Inamex, which produces malt, which led to the name change to Grupo Modelo. During the same period, the company began exports of Corona beer to the United States, becoming the second most imbibed imported beer there by 1986. Exports to other countries followed and Corona became the number one premium imported beer in the United States in 1997. Half of Grupo Modelo's stock is owned by Anheuser-Busch. The beer brewing division of FEMSA was created when this entity bought Cerveceria Cua Udamoc Moctezuma, which itself was created when Cerveceria Cua Udamoc bought Cerveceria Moctezuma. Cerveceria Cua Udamoc was founded in 1890 by Isaac Garza, José Maguerza, Joseph M. Schneider and Francisco Sada, selling their first beer, Carta Blanca. Cerveceria Cua Udamoc grew in size in Monterrey, 
and like Cerveceria Modelo, went national as it began to buy smaller breweries in other parts of the country, absorbing many of the local brands and making them available nationally. The biggest acquisition was that of Cerveceria Moctezuma in Orizaba in the 1980s. Cerveceria Moctezuma started out as the Cerveceria Guillermo Has y Compania in 1893, and eventually changed its name to Cerveceria Moctezuma. It was a major producer of beer since the early 20th century, and was one of the largest brewing companies in the world with the merger of the two, but the new company controls over 12 brand names. FEMSA bought the combined breweries to add to its other businesses, such as bottling and packaging enterprises. FEMSA's brands today include Takati, Sol, Dos Equus, Carta Blanca, Superior, Indio, Bohemia, and Noche Buena. Grupo Modelo's brands include Corona, Corona Light, Negra Modelo, Modelo Especial, Victoria, Estrella, Leon, Montejo, and Pacifico. Most of these beers are lagers brewed in large industrial plants, and made with minimal malt. Except for some dark beers, such as Dos Equas Amber, Leon Negra, Negra Modelo, and Noche Buena, which are Vienna-style beers, almost all beer produced in Mexico is Pilsner. Beers with top fermentation had been produced in Mexico. The Cerveceria Toluca was founded in 1865 by a Swiss especially to produce this type of beer, but the introduction of bohemian-style beers through the giant brewery Cua Udamoc would define Mexican beer as Pilsner. The Major Breweries and Brands Globally one of the best-known Mexican beers is Corona, which is the flagship beer of Grupo Modelo. Corona is the best-selling beer produced by Mexico, and the best-selling non-domestic beer in both the US and UK. It is one of the five most consumed beers in the world, available in more than 150 countries. It is a lager and was created in 1925 to celebrate Cerveceria Modelo's 10th anniversary. Corona is light straw in color and has a very mild flavor, with little hop bitterness and 4.6% alcohol by volume. It is produced by eight facilities with a total of 4.6 billion liters per year capacity. Corona beer is available in a variety of bottled presentations, ranging from the 250 ml Ampol Lita up to the 940 ml Corona Familiar or Balina. Unlike most beers, Corona is bottled in a clear bottle, increasing the opportunity for spoilage from sunlight, which can affect the hop oils in the beer. A draft version also exists, as does canned Corona in some markets. Microbreweries in Mexico the oldest and most traditional pilsner in Mexico is Bohemia, which has a significant hops flavor and is quite dense given its clarity. Bohemia has reached the respected distinction of being like one of the finest beers of the world. The name comes from the Bohemia region in the Czech Republic that is known for beer. It is one of the longest aged products from Cerveceria Kuaudamak and is the only one to use Liposterian hops. There is a dark version of this brand, which is a Vienna-style beer. In 2009, the company introduced a wheat version of this beer called Bohemia Weizen made with wheat, Mount Hood hops, coriander and orange peel. It is the first wheat beer to be produced by a major beer company in Mexico. Commemorative Beers Dos Equus was first brewed in Mexico by the German brewer Wilhelm Haas in 1897. The original name of the beer was Siglo XX with the double X standing for the number 20, and it commemorated the arrival of that century. 
The original version is the Dos Equus Amber, a Vienna style dark beer. This was Cerveceria Moctezuma's best selling beer in the 1940s and 1950s. Demand for the beer has resurged, especially in the United States, where it is now the best selling imported dark beer. The clear version of this brand is a lager derived from the amber. Sol was introduced in the 1890s as El Sol. The name came from a ray of sunshine that fell on a pot while preparing the mash. After being off the market for many years, this brand was reintroduced in 1993, and is now exported to Latin America, Europe, and Asia. It is a very light-colored beer with little hops flavor, and considered to be a beer for the young people and the working class. Seoul is known for its sexy advertising. Seoul comes in a number of varieties. Seoul 2 is a stronger flavored beer, Seoul Lemon and Sal have lime and salt flavors already added, and there is a Seoul Zero a non-alcoholic beer in regular and lime and salt versions. Beer Drinking Habits in Mexico Tecate was originally brewed by Cerveceria Tecate, and named after the city of Tecate, Baja California. The local brewery was bought by Cua Udamoc Moctezuma in 1955. It was the first beer to be canned in Mexico with Tecate Light launched in Mexico in 1992. Tecate is one of the best-known brands in Mexico due to its patronage of sports teams and sporting events. Noche Buena is generally only available around Christmas. Many people wait for this beer's availability each year between the months of October and December. Noche Buena is a strong-flavored, Dark beer named after the poinsettia plant or Noche Buena in Spanish, which decorates the beer's bottles and cartons. Carta Blanca was Cerveceria Cua Udamoc's first premium beer, first marketed in 1890, and is technically a pilsner. The name means white card in Spanish, which at the time was given to people as a sign of respect. Carta Blanca was successful when it debuted at Chicago's Columbian Expo of 1893. Since then, the beer has won a number of other awards. Negra Modelo is one of Cerveceria Modelo's original beers, and was first sold as a draft in 1926. While it has been classed as a Vienna-style beer, the company's website now classifies it as a Munich Dunkel. Pacifico, a Mexican Pilsner beer originally brewed in Mazatlan, Sinaloa, is named after the Pacific Ocean. The picture on the bottle is the Deer Islands off the coast of Mazatlan surrounded by a lifesaver. Pacifico is Modelo's best-selling beer in northwest Mexico and it is exported to the southwest U.S. A light version of this beer was launched in 2008. Estrella was originally brewed by Cerveceria Estrella of Guadalajara at the end of the 19th century. This brewery was bought by Grupo Modelo in 1954. The beer is still brewed only in Guadalajara and is a regional brand mostly sold in Jalisco State and other areas in western Mexico. Indio was originally named Cua Udamoc by Cerveceria Cua Udamoc. However, consumers soon began to refer to it as Indian for the image of an Indian on what was originally a clay bottle, now glass. The beer still has an image of Cua Udamoc on the label. Modelo Especial is Grupo Modelo's second brand after Corona, and was first brewed in 1925. It is a Pilsner-style beer that is available in both bottle and cans since 1966. It is second in popularity in Mexico and the company's third best seller in the USA. A light version, called Modelo Light, 
has been available since 1994. Superior, made by Kuahudamak Moctezuma, was, as the name suggests, originally brewed to be a premium beer. Recently, interest in this beer has reappeared, and it received a gold medal at the Mon Selection in Brussels, Belgium. The design of the label has not changed in the 50 years this brand has been available. Victoria was first brewed by Cerveceria Toluca y Mexico starting in 1865, but Modelo acquired the brand when they bought this company in 1935. It is sold in bottles, both the standard 325 ml and the large 950 ml. The beer is a Vienna style, but is an amber color and lighter than the other Vienna beers brewed in Mexico. Leon and Montejo brands were originally brewed in Merida, Yucatan by the Cerveceria Yucateca, which was bought by Modelo in 1979. Leon is a Munich-style dark beer, which was initially brewed at the beginning of the 20th century in the southeast of the country. Montejo was first introduced in 1960 to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Yucateca Brewery. This brewery was bought by Grupo Modelo in 1979, and the packaging was changed to the current one in 1999. Microbrews are a new and still rare phenomenon in Mexico, especially compared to countries such as the US, Canada, and those in Europe, but they do exist. The first was established in the 1990s in Mazatlan and called Pepe's Y Joe's. Later in the decade, others, such as Cerveceria San Angel and Cerveceria Santa Fe Beer Factory, appeared in Mexico City. Most Mexican microbrews are exported to the U.S., as it is difficult for small breweries to compete in the Mexican market. Unlike the brands produced by Modelo and Femsa, these breweries tend to produce ales, rather than lagers. One example is Beer Lounge, located in Guadalajara, and has the first female brewer in Mexico, Elba Copado. Casorcio Cervecero de Baja California, popularly known as Tijuana Beer, is located in the city of Tijuana and produces styles they call as Guerra, Morena, and Light. Some, such as Cerveceria Mexicana, based in Ensenada, have been bought out by foreign companies. In this case, the Mexican company was bought by Coors. Brands sold in the U.S. include Cerveza Mexicala Pale Lager and Red Pig Mexican Ale. Cerveceria Cosico is located in Hidalgo State, and is only distributed in the Mexico City area, as it is sold only in barrels with plans to produce bottles sometime in the future. There are two brands, Cosico Negra and Cosico Roja, which is a Belgian-style beer and the only one produced in Mexico. Cerveceria Calavera are bottling a very small-scale production of eight beer styles, including big beers like Triple, Double and Imperial Stout, but also many others. Also they have brewed several seasonals such as its Yule Christmas beer. Cerveceria Minerva, of Guadalajara, was awarded gold at the World Beer Cup 2010 in the category of English-style mild ale for its Minerva Pale Ale. Minerva also brews a Kolsch, Stout, and an Imperial Tequila Ale or Ida. Cerveza Chainic was founded in 2012 in Mexico City and brews two styles, Chainic Red Ale and Chainic Premium Bitter. Chainic is mainly distributed in the central states of Mexico. In addition to microbrews, some enterprises have introduced niche brands based more on name or marketing, rather than on brewing style. One company by the name of Minerva based in Guadalajara, introduced a beer named Malverde after the supposed saint of drug traffickers, 
Jesus Malverd. The beer was first introduced in Culiacan, Sinaloa. It is also available in Guadalajara. This same company had earlier launched Duff Beer, modeled after the beer on the television show The Simpsons but ran into copyright issues. More recently, group of Mexican businessmen introduced a beer called Ten Morado, which is named in honor of Diego Maradona. This beer is the first is a series dedicated to various football-slash-soccer legends and teams which the enterprise called La Liga Cervecera. The beer was introduced at the Two Festival de Cerveza de Guadalajara and according to its producers it is light, with body, and with a flavor similar to the most premium beers of Argentina. Maradona's face does not appear on the label, only the word Moreto and the number 10, with a background of blue and white stripes. This same group created the company Cerveceria Revolucion with beers dedicated to Che Guevara, Machiavello, and Emiliano Zapata. Mexican beer is distinctive for its lager-like properties, being generally light-bodied with a mild taste and is meant to be consumed cold. Most beer is sold in 325 ml bottles called medias in the popular slang, with certain brands such as Tecati and Modelo a special often sold in cans. In Mexico, most bottled beer is sold in returnable bottles, the deposit for which can be almost the price of the beer itself. But certain brands, such as Corona and Victoria, are available in large bottles of 925 or 940 ml. The slang term for these is caguamas or in some parts, like Mazatlan, Balinas, but usually referring to the Pacifico brand. This type of bottle was first introduced in Mexico in 1960 along with the six-pack, often referred to in Mexico as A6. Very little beer in Mexico is served on tap. In Mexico, Beer is commonly served with lime juice. A beer cocktail called a michelada consists of light beer with lime juice, salt, and sometimes chili powder, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce or tomato juice. As with a margarita, the salt is generally placed on the rim of glass. A less common version of the drink adds clamato. The name Michelada comes from the phrase Mi Kila Halada. In many places also are found variants which include shrimp or seafood, pineapple, and so on. While many trends in the United States have become popular in Mexico, beer on tap has not. Another trend that has not proven successful in Mexico is that of light beer. Despite Corona Light being the best-selling imported light beer in the United States, sales of Corona Light in Mexico have been dismal. Grupo Modelo introduced the product after having success with exports. The beer was introduced with television ads and featured in two-for-one specials at many bars. However, light beer is generally not favored in Mexico with the exception of Tecati Light in the north. With poor sales, Corona Light is rarely found in Mexico other than a few select places. A recent trend amongst young adults has created a niche for light beers and most hip bars usually stock at least one brand of light beer, but this is not common outside of large cities.